This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Hey everybody, welcome to the episode of Miles Edge Face Attorney Investigations where we destroy the judge's argument. Apparently. We're I don't know what we're doing. Yeah, still in the middle of turnabout reminiscence. In the middle. And Marty already figured out the contradiction. Oh, yeah. Do you I definitely... remember what the contradiction was? Um. Wasn't it that he saw Gumshoe and he would have been sitting down, so then he was like, oh, yes, I indeed. Oh, here. I went to the restroom. Hold it. Please tell, tell us in more that. detail about this. Your Honor, why exactly did you pay a visit to the restroom, if I may ask? Oh, Edgeworth, this is not going to go well. Oh! Well, isn't it obvious? What else do you go to the restroom for? Gossip! Or maybe, uh, I knew it! You suspect me of some sort of tomfoolery, don't you? In the bathroom? Please stay calm, Your Honor. This is going to be much harder than I anticipated. In reality, the judge just goes to the bathroom during every recess break to smoke. <laughs> and it's, it's like, against federal policy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, I need to think things through with a level head. I'm just nervous because so much has happened today with this trial. Let's see, I announced a recess and a time for us to reconvene. But having done all that, I still wasn't able to go to the restroom right away. And why couldn't you? Mr. Faraday had been accused, so I had paperwork to process regarding a new prosecutor. Once I had finished that, I was finally able to make a mad dash to the restroom. <laughs> At least he stayed consistent with on the going to the restroom part of his testimony. The interesting thing is the judge, like, is kind of portrayed to be kind of, like, anxious outside of court. Where he's like, I'm not usually the one on this side of the stand. Like, um, this what am weird. I supposed to do? Like, he's mm. kind of used to his way of doing things. Right. Hold it! There's a window. Isn't that cool? Your Honor, did you really go to the men's restroom? Or did you go to the women's? Whoa, whoa. What is the meaning of that statement? I simply meant that perhaps you went to a restroom on a different floor. I had to go for such a long time. It was all I could do to dash to the closest one in the courtroom. Okay, I don't want to hear more about that. Hmm, I suppose that's only natural given his circumstances. Francisco is just dead silent during all of this. <laughs> I, she can't object to anything because she doesn't know what the men's room is like. Right, Francisco? Oh, <laughs> Unless Francis she had to clean the men's room once as well. Yeah, Francisco <laughs> definitely worked at a wedding center where she had to clean the restroom. <laughs> I ran from the courtroom through this floor's main lobby and down the hallway. Once you enter, you can see there's a window just above the urinal. Above the urinal? See? I told you! <laughs> that is such bad design! I told you, it's literally like you could just look over and see them taking a dump. They don't take a dump in urinals! I know they don't. <laughs> that would be very bad. And it was through that window, though. And it was through that window that you witnessed Detective Gumshoe, Your Honor? Yes, exactly! Your Honor, there is no need to yell. I can hear you just fine. Oh, I guess I put a little too much into that last answer. Now then, let's continue with the testimony. <laughs> okay. As I entered, I saw that detective buying something from the vending machines. Are you sure that the person you witnessed was Detective Gumshoe, Your Honor? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. It's hard to miss someone of his stature, even from as far away as the restroom. He is kind of fat. Besides, I can't think of anyone else with that kind of hairstyle and big beige coat. Won't be beige for long. <laughs> well, I was simply wondering if you were mistaken in what you saw. What? Preposterous! My eyes are sharp as can be! Ready to see through the lies to the truth. Although recently, things do seem to be a bit fuzzier than they used to be. Clearly his eyes are not the only things that have gone fuzzy. But allow me to say with all the honor and dignity of a judge, I am not mistaken in what I saw. Cool. But when I was about to exit the restroom, he had completely disappeared. Hold it. He disappeared? But your honor, didn't you just say, I saw that detective buying something from the vending machines? I don't get the- okay, so the- so the window's above the urinals, apparently. Uh-huh. Which means, was he looking through the window the whole time? I mean, there's not a whole lot else to do when you're at the urinal. You just stand there until you're done. Yeah, you could look out. Yeah, so he's like, okay, so I saw him buy the stuff at the vending machine. So clearly he was watching, and then all of a sudden he just like man vanished. Either that or he looked away from the window for, for some reason. Then when he looked he back, looked he was gone. No, he looked like, away to flush it. Dude. So he just vaporized? <laughs> no! That takes like okay. two seconds tops to flush Maybe, the toilet. Well, he had to wash his hands, although we were just why would, having... why would you go back to the urinal after you washed your hands? <laughs> Maybe you can see from the sink 
as well. For the mirror, I guess. Generally, the sinks aren't right across from the urinal. Yeah, that so. would be. Well, sometimes the ladies' restroom, the stalls are usually right across from the sinks. Oh yeah, you can put the stalls right across from the sinks because the doors there. It's a little. It's very unusual to put urinals right yeah. across from the because in the mirror then you can reflect so and see the men's room it's that weird. i worked in <laughs> so terribly, the men's room that i worked in there were the two urinals they were kind of in this weird little like side part no the yeah. restroom so you couldn't see it if for whatever reason you walked in the wrong way some of it was this restroom also had showers but it went here's the urinals here and the sinks were here so nobody can see your pen so you go it. walk 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 you're right there so it could be, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to figure this out. This is Edward's this is brain, very... by the way. Yes. It's like, how did the heck did this work? Why, yes. Yes, I did. And I was looking out the window the whole time. <laughs> the restroom window looks over the courtyard and right into the hallway. But just as I was about to exit, I took another look and there was no one in sight. That led me to the only solution to this mystery. Well, I mean... That detective must have gone into the crime scene while we number two at that point! So he looked into the hallway from the restroom and over the courtyard, did he? A detective that goes missing while on duty. That sounds mighty suspicious to me! <laughs> Your Honor, I ask that you please remain calm. No, 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 I'm perfectly calm! I'm perfectly, calm. perfectly calm! I am completely calm! <laughs> <laughs> You're being anything but perfectly calm. It appears that his honor could not have been mistaken in what he saw. Hmph. I suppose so, given his line of sight. However, Francisco, why do you suppose our lines of sight are so different? If you're referring to my height. C can you hold that whip still for just a second? Now about his honor's testimony. I believe his line of sight to be an important factor. If it's that important, why don't you hurry and tell him already? I will, but there's one more thing I need to do if I am to correct his honor's testimony. I'm going to need to retrace Detective Gumshoe's movements. Well, yeah, we'll get that. All right. I figured it out immediately. Yeah, you did. So, would that be the floor? Point? That would do probably... we have to... Oh, no, his fingerprints. Objection! What, 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 the, what was that finger wag for, Mr. Edgeworth? Don't you know it's rude to shout objection while giving someone to me testimony? Ha! Huh. If you truly are a man of the law, then you must always be vigilant. For example, I myself never let an opp opportunity to shout objection pass me by. Miles Edgeworth, it's one thing to be passionate about your job, but this is real life. This is what some people may say is the pot calling the kettle black. Your Honor, I wonder if you might take a look at this for me. What is that filth? How dare someone dirty the hallway bench like that? Who is the culprit? The par car party's hereby found guilty of uncleanliness. <laughs> if you must know, the uncouth bench sullier has already been placed under arrest thanks to your earlier testimony, Your Honor. Oh? Well, that's good. But who was it? We were able to discover something from the smudge on the bench. Namely, Detective Gumshoe's fingerprints. Not happy with committing just murder! He had to go dirty the courthouse too? Guilty! <laughs> Your Honor, please calm down. While it's true that the detective is the one who made the mess on the bench, we have not yet established that his, this action is related to the double murder. What do you mean? I believe that the detective bought a pack of Swiss rolls from the vending machine, and then promptly sat down on the bench to eat one. The cake crumbs and pieces of chocolate on the floor under the bench, and Detective Gumshoe's fingerprints prove my conclusions to be true. Oh, but I still don't understand. Is this whole thing related to how I couldn't see him as I was leaving the restroom? Yes. Heh, <laughs> it is indeed. The window in the hallway was built rather high up into the wall, at around a grown adult's chest height. As evidence, I submit that Franziska herself was unable to see out of that window. I knew I shouldn't have used her height as evidence. But basically, what this means is that the area directly under the hallway window is a blind spot when the hallway is being viewed from the men's restroom. But then... Humph. It seems that you have made the connection. If someone were to sit on the bench under the window... 
yes, even someone as large as Detective Gumshoe, would effectively disappear from sight. What? Do you finally see, Your Honor? Your testimony has just proven that Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway the entire time. I just time. realized, how did the judge see out of the window? Because the judge is about the same height as Francisco. No, 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 the window in the men's room. It, the men's room is just on a higher height. Oh, hallway, oh, it's like, okay. Yeah. Okay, because I was like, how would he have been able to see it then if he's like the same height as Francisco? And he's, I mean, no, different whatever. heights because okay. different floors. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it with that much enthusiasm. All I wanted to do was try saying it once. Here, let me try that again. Hold it! Is there something of value that you'd like to say? Yes, actually there is. I remembered something else just now! What are you, our normal witness? <laughs> uh, Mr. Edgeworth, please allow me to testify to the court one more time. Even if we overruled him, he'd just keep on talking, wouldn't he? That might not be a bad thing. The more info, the better in a perfect investigation, right? I love how even the judge looks ticked off and like to look. He does, but like, not as much as he could be. What would I saw part two? I suppose it's possible you can't see a seated person from the restroom window. However, that doesn't mean that detective was sitting there when I looked. Anyway, I forgot to testify earlier about probably the most important detail, of course. As I was leaving the restroom, I heard a loud bang of a gunshot. So that means. Gah! You didn't tell us that earlier. How is that? That is the testimony of one who judges the crimes of others. Your Honor, could you try to state the important facts first next time? I agree. Before you go around judging others, you should learn to judge your own words. Yee! Oh, I'm sorry! But honestly, I thought that, that sound until that was just a noise popper. It could have been. Now that he mentions it, right before we restarted the trial, he did talk about that. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Yeah, I thought that was Kay, though. I thought Kay set off a party popper. Uh, the most critical point in this argument is when did the judge look into <gasps> the hallway. What if everybody faked the death? Well, with, with a gunshot, at least. Oh. <laughs> That'd be so nuts if they fake the death somehow with Kay's party popper or something. And Wait, then... the two guys aren't actually dead? No, they're dead. But they're dead in a different means. One of the guys was shot. The autopsy confirmed that. Okay, maybe they timed the shot at the same time as the party popper. So that would make... What's him... the point? <laughs> no, because that way they could switch the deaths. Because it lo remember when they were laying down, it looked like one died before the other, but in reality, with the facts, the other one died before... They the died basically one. at the same time, though. They did, but it was, like, a little bit different. And whether that lines up with what the when the gun was actually fired. Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to clarify a few details in your testimony. You kind of see why this is my favorite case in the game, though? Yeah. Well, I suppose it's possible it's your favorite case in the game. The other reasoning, too, is that um, Kay's barely in it, and you hate her. Kay's also not even in the first two cases, but the first two cases just kind of sucked. Except that's part of the second case where uh, the, our saving was Grace was the bed sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was... I'm still trying to remember what those cases were. Oh, no, first wait. case was Basketball first Boy, case... and second, and case, second case, was case was the airline. airlines. I love the airlines case. Oh. In that case, do you concede that you were overconfident in your last testimony? N now hold on there! I just said that it's possible you can't see a seated person from the restroom this time. But you know something? I don't think that you know when the prints that you referenced were left on the bench, do you? Nah. While you've proven that it's possible the detective was sitting, I still have a problem with just when those fingerprints were left. He's right. I have yet to prove when the fingerprints were left on the bench. While he feigns ignorance, his honor has seen a lot in life. This judge, I mustn't underestimate him. The judge is really smart in this case. <laughs> in this case? <laughs> Hold it! As we established, you went to the restroom during the recess. However, at what point in the recess did you look into that hallway? Hmm, after I called for a recess, I handled the change of prosecutor paperwork. Maybe about 20 minutes until we reconvene? Yes, that sounds about right. Hmm. <laughs> Just as I expected. Wh what were you expecting? And I demand to know what that all knowing smile was for. Your Honor, that statement you just made is very important. I'd like for you to append it to your testimony. Uh, Alright, if you insist. 
Let's see, I looked into the hallway about 20 minutes before we were to reconvene. Hold it! Hmm, 20 minutes before we reconvened. Very well, what did you do after that? Let's see, I had to make some preparations, so I rushed straight back to the courtroom. I also had to track down a few pieces of paperwork for the various papers. So you rushed back to the courtroom despite having just heard a gunshot? Well, at the time, I thought it was just the sound of a noise popper. I really couldn't think of any other explanation than someone having a birthday party. In the courthouse! For some no reason! reason. <laughs> Man, those, those cakes... Those <laughs> I so mean, good. people did have Taco Bell cater, but, but now, now that this has happened... I see. Thinking back, the judge did mention something to that effect when we reconvened. Uh, anyway, I forgot to testify earlier about probably the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. This happens a lot. If it's something that forgettable, I don't need to hear it. Yeah, but, but all I did was forget to mention it. That sort of excuse may work on other people, but not on Ivan Karma. Oh! Did he get whipped? No. But, but it's such an important piece of testimony. Uh, please give me a chance to present it. Hmm. I suppose I have no choice in the matter. Um, by the way, she whips the judge all the time. The yeah, but girl. I feel like a 13-year-old can't get away with that as much as... But, but a fully grown adult who could be tried as an adult? I don't know. Camp? I don't know. I... It just... Hmm. I suppose I have no choice wrong. in the matter. Oh, yeah. Of course, both are all. As I was leaving the restroom, I heard the loud bait of a... Noise popper, no gunshot now. Your Honor, about what you just said. I know, I couldn't believe it, but Bane went the gunshot, I heard it loud and clear, and then it was a knee jerk reaction, ah, and I jumped like this, yes, just like this, ah! I'm trying to imagine the judge just hopping around the room. Your Honor, please remain calm when you're trying to explain yourself to me. Yes, sir, sorry about that. Uh, now then, I must gather myself, yes. When I heard the gunshot, there was no one in the hall, I should know, I looked! There was no one there! This judge's emotion circuit seemed to be stuck on overreact. I believe that we finally found the flaw in his honor's testimony. Yet sadly, he's completely oblivious to it. But I guess I can't really expect him to be aware of it. Well, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and fill him in. At least, that thing finally came in handy. Indeed. Now let's see what happens when I present the it to his honor. The balloon popped! That's it! The <laughs> that balloon, is it. The balloon hit the cactus. I was like, once she said that piece of evidence, I'm like, we haven't done anything with the freaking balloon. Objection! Got it. Wait, what? <laughs> that statement right now contradicts this piece of evidence. I think we should really? the cactus, maybe. Your Honor, by my account, there's absolutely no contradiction here at all. <laughs> really? Well, then I guess we're still alright. Please continue with the testimony. The two of them overruled me! He didn't even penalize us. Uh, Dwarf is just pen penalizing himself, remember? Yeah. At this rate, I will lose the truth to the darkness forever. I need to stay calm, think carefully, and find a flaw in his testimony fast. We don't have a cactus. But what is it? We heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to start again. Oh, no, so it's a different part. About 20 minutes before. Oh. Well, Detective Bad could totally be wrong about that. Oh, totally. He's not very trustworthy. No. Your Honor! I cannot allow you to make an objection. What?! Your Honor, I'm really sorry, but... I cannot allow you to not allow me to make an objection. <laughs> you can't! I've been overruled?! <laughs> your Honor, there are simply too many holes in your testimony for my taste. Well, what do you mean by that?! You claim that you heard the gunshot during the recess, but that is simply not possible. Mr. New Prosecutor recommended by Manfred Vaughn. Nah! Instead of biting your tongue, why don't you something, something, something? <laughs> I see you have no mercy for the elderly Ivor, Francisca. Hmm. Don't talk back to me unless you want to be whipped in the back. With your height, you need a stepladder or four to accomplish that. <laughs> Thank goodness that was just in his inner monologue. Ahem, Mr. Edgeworth. My ears are not that far gone yet, I'll have you know. I can still hear just fine. And I heard the sound of a gunshot loud and clear with my own two ears. Ha! Huh. Your Honor, I have here an interesting bit of testimony. It's from Detective Bad. And according to him, he heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to start again. What did you just say? Your Honor, 
you just said that you heard the gunshot about 20 minutes before we were to reconvene. How do you explain this glaring contradiction? That that could be! Unfortunately, that is the truth. B but I heard it clear as day. Bane, the loud shot of a the, uh, the loud sound of a gunshot. The sound of the gunshot. We keep returning to this point of contention. And what piece of evidence? I always did wonder why I found it where I did. However, now I understand what that gun sh gunshot the judge heard really was. Unfortunately, Your Honor, this is what really produced the gunshot you heard. The equivalent of a party popper. It was this uh, gun. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're trying to say with that piece. Franziska, you're just still too young to understand. Stop trying to fool me and start being mature enough to admit when you're wrong. Yeah. That time Francisca penalized us. Yeah. Perhaps that was not the piece I needed to show. I like his, um, coat animation. Yeah. I found this object in the hallway earlier. What is that pink substance? It may not look like it, but this is actually a piece of a balloon. I see. And I suppose you would like me to accept that pink balloon into the court record? Your Honor, I present this piece of evidence to, in order to overrule your testimony. W what? Your Honor, your argument goes as follows. You saw no one in the hallway when you heard the gunshot. Now, there is no guarantee that the detective was sitting on the bench at that time. Therefore, you believe he must have been at the crime scene to defend at lobby number two. Am I correct? Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> that was a, a flamboyant hymn. Sorry. That was. He's wearing his flamboyant <laughs> outfit now. Let me ask you something. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, Edward. Let me ask you something. But he's not British if he's gay. <laughs> Do you think that the gunshot you heard was produced by a real gun? Okay, I can- Wait, I'm making it sound like if you're British, you can't be gay. That's not That's what not, I mean. No. <laughs> no. I, no, the, she was trying to say, I can't do a British accent and a gay voice at the same time. Even yeah, though yeah, gay yeah, people yeah. oftentimes do just sound like no. <laughs> <laughs> I just had that realization. And we like, just defended every gay person. <laughs> yup. I feel like most gay people don't watch my stuff, though. Yeah. Do you think that the gunshot you heard was produced by a real gun? I think I've said enough that even you can figure the rest out on your own. Your Honor, you were fooled by the popping of this balloon to thinking it was a gunshot. W what a matter of trickery is this! That was a good effort you put forth, Miles Edgeworth. But if it was me, I'd have wrapped this thing up before the just judge even testified. Care to elaborate on how one ends something before it even begins? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I did think that the sound was a bit off from a real gunshot sound. But who could have guessed that someone would pop a balloon in a place like this? That's true. One doesn't usually think balloons in conjunction with courthouse. Unless Mo is there! <laughs> yeah, he would totally have brought balloons. Kay had it. Um, I want to trade these coins with you. That's it. The balloon that girl was holding. It explains everything. Your Honor, if it makes you feel any better, you didn't lie once in your testimony. However, I can't really vouch for its accuracy. <laughs> Who knew that giving testimony could be such a difficult thing to do? What have I done? I owe Detective Gumshoe a very, very big apology. I will see to it myself that he is released. Wait. There are still a few things I have yet to resolve about what happened in the hallway. Your Honor, I request your permission to further question Detective Gumshoe. But... But why? I thought we just cleared his name. Whether we just did now or not, I still cannot say. The only thing I can do for now is continue in my quest for the perfect explanation. And to that end, I must resolve the remaining issues pertaining to the events that occurred in the hallway. Very well. Bailiff, please bring Detective Gumshoe into the courtroom. I must fulfill my mission and find the perfect explanation to this case. All about that. September 10th. District Court, courtroom number three. Did we move courtrooms? I don't think so. Thanks, Bailiff. W what is it now? Is it time for my trial already? I've already told you a gazillion times, pal. I didn't do it. I'll be the judge of that, Detective Gumshoe. No, you won't. I'll be the judge of that. No, 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 no. I'm the judge around here, and I'll be the judge of that. Why can't you guys be a little less judgmental? Yes, well, speaking of hasty judgments, Detective Gumshoe, I'm afraid I must apologize for error in judgment on my part. 
Your Honor, I don't believe you should apologize just yet. We have yet to prove he is completely innocent of this crime. I guess so. Um, what are you guys talking about? In any case, I would like you to testify as to your actions while you were on guard duty. And please remember, you are not on trial. This is all just part of the investigation. As such, you may still be found to be innocent. However, if you should give false testimony... Yow! My whip will object loud and clear. If you are found to be lying, you will be held indefinitely. Understood? I got you, pal. Thinking back on the state of the crime scene and the judge's testimony, it's obvious that Detective Gumshoe is lying. And if I can't break his lie, then we may never get a break in this case. While I was on duty, I came down here to this courthouse on Detective Bad's orders. As soon as I got here, he ordered me to stand guard in front of lobby number two. From that time on until I heard the gunshot, I was in that hallway the whole time! On my honor as a detective, I swear it wasn't me, pal. He's still singing the same tired tune. Hmm. In that case, I'll just have to change the melody. I know he's lying, and it's time I pulled the information I need out of him. Should we end the episode there? Because it's over roughly about a half hour. Yeah, I guess we can. Because I don't know how close we are to getting to the end of... The... Of the case? Not at the end. Even just, just to the next to be continued. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably that'd be good. Alright. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time we cross-examine Detective Gumshoe. Maybe learn more about the Swiss rolls, little Debbie treats he was eating. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah. gonna be great times. Maybe the judge will say more stuff. <laughs> judge is a great character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot how good he was in this case. He's great. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.